Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Anna Davis Court. I'm an Adobe Creative Resident, and this is the video that I wish I made every single month of the past year. <laughs> uh, this is just to update you guys basically about what I've been doing over the past year, and I hope you enjoy the journey of Anna Davis Court. So at the very beginning of the residency, I was just in complete shock. It was wonderful and amazing, uh, but I quit my job and was able to, for the first time, build my own at-home studio, which has completely transformed over the year. It's insane how much my workspace and home space have changed. Uh, and hands down, I would not have gotten half of the setup that I have right now without the residency. So thank you, Adobe, and thank you, HP, and thank you, Wacom, <laughs> all the amazing brands. Uh, and also, I was kind of aimless with what I was drawing at the very beginning because I felt like I just wanted to do everything. I wanted to make them happy, and I wanted to make me happy. I wanted stuff to be done already. Uh, but what I started doing was Mermaid, which is uh, one of those like hashtag things that you know a lot of artists follow along with, and they can be wonderful, but it definitely wasn't serving the purpose of why I got the residency at the very beginning. So I started just um, sketching out these mermaids, and they were all beautiful and fun and you know carefree. Uh, I started using Adobe Sketch for the first time, which was very exciting. Uh, but what really started making me work on the residency itself was getting my mentor, Lee White, to help me every week. So one of the things that the residency really boasts about is not just about, you know, money or time or, you know, assets to use or opportunities even. What really makes the residency is having these mentors because they are the ones who help you like understand what you're doing in a lot of ways. I would have gotten somewhere, but definitely not where I am right now without Lee. So he completely changed what I was thinking of. I remember our very first meeting was all about where I am. I came in with a full book dummy thinking, I'm gonna make this book and it's gonna be done. And he was just like, I don't wanna see your book dummy. Let's talk about your art style. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Uh, and so it was this wonderful time of, you know, figuring out exactly where I stood. And it wasn't a negative that I was nowhere near where I thought I was. It was more like, let's make this a lot stronger and let's make you a lot stronger. So obviously it's worked out really well from this perspective. Um, back then I, I wasn't worried about it because I thought like, we have a year, let's make this the best it can be. <laughs> uh, and so I learned to develop my style. Whoops. I learned to develop my style with Lee. <laughs> so uh, that first meeting, uh, I was doing a lot of these pieces that were pretty girls and were very animation -y styled. I was obviously working in video games before, so that kind of, in, you know, kind of influenced my style a little bit as well. Um, so what I was doing, he was comparing to uh, another artist called Brittany Lee, who is a fantastic artist, and I'm, I'm very flattered to be compared to her at all. But he was saying that, like, it was me plus her, and he wanted to just kind of see what I was without her, you know, like, what kind of style do I put out into the world? Now that's a really loaded question. Like, what's your art style, you know? So what we did to start on the path of finding out who I was and also putting me into the context of children's books was to make a dream portfolio. Um, there's a full article about how to build a dream portfolio that I wrote for Adobe Create, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, but basically it is gathering the work that you want to create into one space and studying it. So what I started doing was looking for the reference of children's book illustrators, which is like, oh yeah, of course you would look for that. And I had never done it before. Like, yeah, I want to be a children's book artist. Well, where do you start? I don't know, animation? <laughs> so I was definitely taking the harder route. And Lee was just like, nope, 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 do it this way. And he was completely right. So it put me on the style path uh, to developing a new style that I have learned to absolutely love and will completely, like, I'm just going to continue developing the style until perpetuity, you know, like forever. It's my style now, and I get to keep developing it however much I want. 
Um, one of the wonderful things, actually, that I, I love seeing from Lee was his old work versus his new work. Uh, and just feeling like, you know, I, I've seen him for many years make artwork and it's always been stunning. And, you know, he's just he makes it look effortless in so many ways. Um, so I think that seeing his older work and knowing that like I mean he was always a fantastic artist but knowing that he found the style he wasn't just immediately born with it was a very wonderful thing to know that like okay I can do that too so as I was studying children's books and you know I'm still doing that but uh as I was studying them for the first time I was finding a lot of things that I really loved a lot of artists that I really love um and I can actually I will link to a bunch of the artists that are in my dream portfolio down in the description so that you guys can see them as well because they're fantastic artists and I absolutely love their work and also their purposes behind their work a lot of them are just wonderful people <laughs> and I've actually gotten to know some of them through the residency which is awesome and the uh, next stage in the progress of the year I'd say like a major milestone was going to the SCBWI summer conference now SCBWI is the Society for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators it's a mouthful it's too many letters <laughs> in my opinion but wonderful people the absolutely like most organized conferences that I've been to uh, I say conferences because they have multiple per year I went to two of them so this was the first time I had gone and it was in LA and I got to go through three days of pure learning and it was some of the most beneficial information for a beginning artist in any field like if if you're in any field and there's some kind of conference I recommend you go to it because it is most beneficial when you're starting out in my opinion um, there's so many just like things to know it's kind of crazy children's book publishing is a vast world and i had no idea what i was walking into but i am so glad that when i walked in everyone was welcoming and wonderful and i found out this is my place i was definitely meant to be here so going through all of that made me feel wonderful uh and I rewrote my book about 15 times during it. I would go home every night and go home, go to the hotel room and vigorously write on my laptop and just be like, oh my gosh, thoughts, 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 thoughts. I still have the notes from it and they're just pages of scribbles and everything was just like, I was soaking it up like a sponge. And uh, so from that, I completely changed my book dummy. So when I first started the residency, my book dummy was about these two children on Halloween night going through each house and picking up candy from each you know place and being really scared to go to the house at the end of the road and uh because there was like some beast that they were afraid of it was a really cute idea i think but it definitely didn't resonate as much as my current story does not to say that my current story is like the end all be all of great stories and all uh, but it is definitely heads and shoulders above where i was before at this conference they really hammered home that this book should be about something personal to you. You know, write what you know, of course, classic. Um, show, don't tell. All those like classic idiom things that I always need reminding of. What I started to know about what I was writing, you know, now versus what I wrote before. Um, before I was just putting ideas down on the paper. And now what I understand a story to be is something that you personally want to convey. Um, one of the ways that I, I thought about this actually was I used to want to do um, online comics, like little comics of daily things or whatever. And now I think of those daily comic ideas as the seed of a larger story, in my mind at least. I like to think of like, oh, I had an issue with, you know, letting go of something or um, I saw a kid and they were, you know, trying to overcome you know their friend moving away or something like that and it really hits home and I remember oh yeah my friend moved away one time and that really sucked and I thought like I'm never gonna get over this so what do I do about that I write a story now and I know how to break it down because of the things that I have I've learned at this conference and along you know the entirety of the year of course um, but that conference really hammered home what I was writing for and what I was writing about. So the story completely changed overnight. 
Once I had changed that story, I came home and started writing more stories. So I have kept up this habit of every once in a while when I have an idea, you just kind of follow it. And no matter what you're supposed to do that day or whatever, you take out a piece of paper and you just spend as much time as it takes to write it out, make sure that you have everything out of your head and you can revisit it later. And that has been a gold mine for my future story ideas. You know, I'm already pitching more of them and just figuring out what you know, what sticks to the wall. <laughs> Now, after I got home from SCBWI, uh, Lee and I revisited like what we should basically be doing for our, our goals for the year. You know, he wanted me to succeed just as much as I did. So we talked about illustration portfolios. I really didn't have one. You know, I had my old work, which was scattered and all over the place, but my illustration portfolio was almost non-existent, I would say, <laughs> uh, now that I have a new portfolio. So what I started doing was revisiting old pieces because uh, I didn't have a clear path of what I wanted a new story or new pieces to look like so I just went for old ones that I liked revamping them to new so you can see the style completely changed I went from a lot of like lines around things to only using lines inside of things because I loved the outer brush stroke that I was getting as a texture didn't want to cover that up with more lines um, so I was kind of discovering my style at that time and figuring out what I wanted everything in the future to look like. Uh, and as we went along, we kept creating more and more painting. Sometimes it would be for uh, an Adobe project where they wanted me to draw something for content for their website or something like that. Uh, sometimes it would be a painting for the book. Lee and I, of course, would always continually develop the story and make sure that it was as strong as it possibly could be, and then choosing layouts that would convey the story really well, and moving forward with those. So we went from sketch to value to color, um, and that's not to say they were completely done, but they were ideas that stuck for long enough that we knew they would be good enough for portfolio. Portfolio as it is right now you can find at my website which is annadaviscourt.com uh, and I am planning on putting together a separate video about how I've built that portfolio. So Asley and I were working on everything for this year, the illustration portfolio and the book dummy. We had a lot of discussions about what the children's book publishing industry expects from an artist. So one of the things that actually can kill your portfolio or career a little bit is having a finished book. Like if you handed them a finished book with like all full pages done, there's nothing for them to edit. There's nothing for them to say about it. So it was it was more important to us to get a book dummy to publishers so that they could have something that they you know normally would expect from an artist, a book dummy, which is all just sketches and words, uh, and maybe one or two finished pieces to give an idea of what the finished product would look like. Um, that kind of thing is much more beneficial for my career to show to publishers than a fully finished book that they can't do anything with other than like print it, but like. They wouldn't have any say and it's kind of you know if they have a problem then they can't really say much because it's already done <laughs> that kind of thing um was another learning process this year so instead of leaving the year with a fully done book i'm gonna leave it with a much stronger outset of my career uh, and one of the wonderful things that lee also helped me with was finding an agent Woo, i have an agent yeah <laughs> it's so exciting to say that because i i never knew if it was gonna happen it was one of those things that like I don't know how hard or easy it is to get an agent. I'm really not sure. Um, for me, it was very simple because Lee was there to help me with it. Uh, and I am now represented by Shannon Associates with Justin Rucker. Thank you, Justin. Uh, and together we are going to pitch the book and uh, figure out from where, you know, where we want to go into the future and get more work and continue on this journey. My goal for the future is definitely to work on my own books as well as other projects. So I would love to do book covers and spot illustrations, educational stuff, anything, anything that like, you know, feels like a good project to me. Uh, there, I am so open to so much work. So uh, that is basically where we are with the year right now. I've created a lot of side pieces, you know, um, recently I've been 
uh, creating character designs because this summer I'm going to be teaching a character design class at SVS. Uh, that should launch in May. So if you're interested in that, go to svs.learn.com. There will be a link in the description and all that jazz. Um, but just know that you know, there are a lot of things that I've done this year that weren't necessarily for the book, which is like my project was the book. Um, but as long as I got that done, the book dummy, I think everybody has agreed that that is a huge accomplishment. Being agented is a huge ac accomplishment. And everything from here on out is a continuation of the residency. It is a lot of the same kind of work just in a different context now and one of the wonderful things about the residency is feeling like even though it's over technically it doesn't ever leave like i will always be a resident that will always be part of my past so it never really um it doesn't end in a lot of ways <laughs> uh, but that is where i am right now with this year uh there are a lot of like little things that i could tell you about but this is just an overview. This is just a, hey, what have you been up to kind of video. <laughs> um, so if you have any more questions, I would love to do more of these and just kind of keep you updated on my life. And uh, yeah, I hope that you learn something, I guess, <laughs> about me, about the residency, about what I've been doing. Uh, and feel free to talk to me in the comments down below. <laughs> All right, I will see you later. Have a great day. Bye. Everything's spaghetti.